Hi guys, welcome to Extra Time. This is basically just a roundup of the end of the season. A little bits that you haven't seen like in like yesterday's video. And then it's also getting into the beginning of season four. Yes, and we're going to be in the championship, guys. That's what's to come in today's video. Hello guys and welcome to Dreaming is Possible here with Chesterfield and yes we're doing like just the, the, the bit of like rundown that you that you have to fast forward you know what I mean to get to so it's like you know end of the Premier League season end of this football season so you get to see wins like the Champions League FA Cup Premier League stuff like that like you know what I mean at the end of the season and then obviously a little bit of like you know look at um, how the team finished with little, little bits of awards and stuff like that so as you can see this is kind of like the, the best 11 overall that we've got to so far so we've got Remy Matthews um, is like the number one goalkeeper. Richard Wyatt is right back. Sam Habigan, yes, you remember him. He's at left back. Yarny back Sorensen. Traore, then we've got Levi Sutton. Mandeville's there. we got Spyro, who was actually now back at the club, but, you know, he will be playing this coming season because he was out obviously on loan. We've got Will Patch in there. We've got Poku, which obviously now is, is, is left on the bench. Josh Vickers, we talked about him in yesterday's um, episode, and then we've got um, Issa, was it yesterday's episode or was it the day before? I'm trying to think now. Um, we've got Issa Solomon, we've got Dave Buchanan, we've got um, Patrick Garber, Joe Rowley, Ethan Walker, Benny Ashley Seal. Is Dave Buchanan still playing or is he retired now? Um, he is actually assistant manager or under 18s assistant manager at Linfield. Okay, that's where he is. I was just wondering where, where he got himself like an off to. But um, yeah, anyway, guys, um, what else have we got? We've got the um, end of season awards. But Mazbek Sorensen has become the fans player of the season with a 42% overall. Yosef Yarni at 24% and then Ben Ashley Seal at 21%. So they're the top three. Um, goal of the season um, is from Tom Dinsmore. Let's um, um, recap on this one. So here it is, um, a bit of a, a challenge um, there initially, but then Morris managed to pick it up, turns it uh, across here to Dinsmore, hits it first time right into the top corner. I'm not entirely sure if you guys actually got to see that live. I don't think you did. That was the game against Bolton. But as you can see, right up into that top corner, first time hit, great strike from Tom Dinsmore. Um, we've got a signing of the season is Nathan Tormey, who spent 250000 got him in from uh, from Arsenal, obviously with the departing of Poku. He was the main guy that I have brought in like me to try and like you know plug that gap as it were we got richard wyatt as one um, young player of the season so well done to you uh season review i um basically this is just you know saying we'll be finished and stuff like that nothing really that you didn't really know from that like to be honest and um, we got our club vision and expectations meeting now this is what they're going to be wanting from us for next season so play attacking football possession all that that's exactly the same uh, work within the wage budget again the same uh uh, oh, this is different. Well, normally it's like avoid relegation. Now they're expecting us to do a lot better. They want us to finish in the top half of the championship. So, okay, they're, they're expecting, um, I suppose, because we've overachieved. We're kind of like, you know, um, sort of the victims of our own success, aren't we? Like, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, they want us to, by the end of um, 2023, not this season, but the 2023 season, they want us to get into the playoffs. Obviously, then my contract expires, and then, like, it's continuously, then for the next sort of, like, continuous three years, keep getting into the playoffs. And um, hopefully, by then might even have maybe made it into the Premier League. Who knows, like, I mean, by that sort of, like, stage. But, um, yeah, the board of Nike suddenly thought, hey, you know, we keep saying about relegation, you keep getting promoted. So we're going to, like, you know, better put a bit more of a challenge your way. Like, um, as for the squad dynamics and stuff, it finished off with a very good dressing room atmosphere and the managerial support is excellent. Well, and um, we've got our main team leaders as uh, Joseph Yarny, Beck Sorensen's there, and Remy Matthews, and then the highly influential players underneath them as well. Patchin, Carl Morris, and then Adam Lewis. Well, a couple of those players are actually on loan, so that's interesting to see because Adam Lewis will obviously go back to Liverpool, and Beck Sorensen will obviously go back to um, Brentford. Um, so they were in an end of um, season team meeting. Um, this is to discuss plans for next season. I can see this going a little bit wrong because some of the players might feel that top half of the season, top half of the league for next season might be 
a step too far. Some of them might think that we should be challenging from a promotion. Um, I've got a feeling this is going to be interesting to see how this goes. Um, we've got quite a lot of options here to, to choose from. Um, but let me have a, a quick butchers down like and see which is I think what's going to be best for us. Right, well this is the one that I've like kind of settled on and I know it's going to probably annoy a few of them but I've basically said that you've done brilliantly to get us promoted this season and you all deserve a good break. Hopefully when you get back there'll be some new faces around here that are going to help us push on and finish in the top half. Now some of them are not going to be happy because some of them are probably thinking that their, their position's under threat. Let's see what happens. Oh, well, I'm surprised. There we go. Um, not too bad at all. Like, um, green. Like, I'm I'm, I'm shocked by that one. The, the, you know, but um, Luke Dre, I'm glad that you're all, um, that you'll be strengthening some new players will be, will make it very really eager to win a place in the next team and that can, uh, come on guys, the boss is right. We can, well, everyone's happy with that. That's exactly the sort of overall extraction I was looking for. Brilliant. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Um, that worked out quite well. The screen that I do like the, the best about like showing like, you know, how, how long players have been out for for over injury. We know that Sammy Simodics was out for a long time. I think it was seven months or something. Um, that he he's still not back from injury yet. Like, oh, it's six months there, but it's actually probably going to be near a seven. Um, but yeah, it was a huge blow to like, to lose him. We've got George Waits that was out with a hip injury. Um, we've got uh, players that are obviously out on loan as well. Like this... Um, Andrew Ilgiwale, um, eight injuries he's picked up. That's not that's not brilliant, is he? Um, but there's quite a few people have got quite a few injuries and stuff like that. We've even got like you know we've got Jeff Davis there, five injuries. I mean they might not be like necessarily like long term injuries, but quite a few of them like you know what I mean um, have picked up like you know certain like an amount of injuries and stuff like that. Like you know, as we go as we go forward, but I do like looking at that screen like I'll, I'll look at it in more depth like you know what i mean instead of boring you guys with it you can obviously like you know pause it yourself and have a look at them if you if you're that um, way inclined so the boys have gone off on holiday we've got shrewsbury chasing ashley um seal so that could possibly be a deal that i'm quite happy to let go do i mean they're looking at spending a three hundred thousand, but I'd, like, I'd rather like you know expect maybe five hundred thousand for him but what i'll do now is that I'll, I'll, I'll fast forward things on and um, to the end of like you know sort of like domestic season and then I'll go. I'll run through like who has won like the major trophies and stuff like that, so to give you an idea on that. So then, how did everything pan out in the end? Well, it's my team, Liverpool. Like, yes, ninety nine points at the top. They have won the Premier League. I think that's three. I'm just hold on. History past winners. Is that three in a row now? There we go. Um, this will be yeah, their third in a row, like sort of thing. So that's pretty impressive from from them. I wish they'd do that in real life. That'd be awesome if we can do that in real life. Um, um, Fulham, Brentford, and West Brom are the, are the teams that are going to get relegated. We've got um, Chelsea, Manchester City, and Manchester United are going to be in the Champions League for for next season. Arsenal are in the um, uh, what we call it, Europa League. It looks like um, Tottenham are in the Champions League as well. Because uh, why? I don't know. Did they win the Europa League, maybe? Maybe we'll get to that in a sec. I'll find out. Um, right, other other tournaments. The um, Carabao Cup was also won by Liverpool. Um, seems to become some kind of a conspiracy, maybe. I don't know. Um, but you'll get you'll understand what I mean by this, by the amount of like, trophies Liverpool have won this season. Just bear with me on this one. FA Cup. One by Liverpool. As you can see, 5-1 over Norwich in the end. Um, wow, yeah. <laughs> Champions League though, no. Real Madrid beat us again. They get the one over us again. Like you know what I mean. But um, uh, considering like how well we've actually done um, in this competition, yes, we've won it the last three seasons in a row. This would have been four in a row, which would have like you know topped what Real Madrid did like not not long ago. So us and Real Madrid are definitely like you know the teams that, that, that love this competition. But yeah, it's um, it's it's Real Madrid to get a one nil victory over us. Um, otherwise, Liverpool would have ended up winning six trophies this season they won the premier league the fa cup the super cup the community shield if you count that as a trophy uh what else do we got super cup uh, did i say that club world championship yeah they just went yeah just mad how many how many trophies um, that liverpool won this season um it came up before and it said something about the the quinn toplet or something when I, I seen it in one of the news reports but yeah that's mad as for the europa league this is why tottenham are in the champions league because they won and um, they beat manchester united um in the final to so an all english final yet again um but after extra time 
to it's Tottenham that um, win the the Europa League, um, and they, it puts them into obviously the Champions League. As for other leagues around the world, Atletico Madrid winning um, in Spain and winning by a huge margin. To be honest, like over Barcelona and Real Madrid, yeah, Atletico absolutely bossed 101 points. Well done to them. Um, it's a, a normal, you know, sort of like um, news resumes as it were. Like, I mean, in in Serie A, as Juventus, like, you know, win there. Um, they're into a playoff there. So well, let's have a look at um, the Bundesliga actually won that one because there's a playoff situation going on. I'll come back to in a second. League Nos, uh, we've got Benfica winning that one. Um, and the others are all sort of like into playoffs and stuff like that. So let's have a look at um, the Bundesliga. So it was Bayern that um, won the Bundesliga. Um, yeah, 10 points clear of, of, of Dortmund. So nothing new um, regarding that one. In the playoffs, it's Sheffield United that are going to be going up to the Premier League. So we will not be facing them next season. And it's Crawley that's going to be joining us and Bristol Rovers. They're going to be coming up with us. They beat Coventry in the final of that one. So that is the end of like sort of like, you know, all the, the cup competitions and stuff like that. I don't think I've missed any, to be honest. Um, but yeah, let's um, get through pre-season then um, and show you some like, you know, transfers that I, I that I've done. And um, also um, like, you know, how the sort of like fixture list looks for, for next season and stuff like that. So the early part of the transfers has been done. As you can as you can see, not many players come in. You've you know about three of them already and there's only one that you you're not really sure about, which is Matt Clark. I'll get to him in just a sec. But yeah, you do know about um Bo Jansen, you know about um Toffolo and you also know about Parola. I did explain um those ones um in the last um episode. And yeah, just to give you just a little quick more like look at the just overall stats like quickly like I mean so that that is Bo Janssen that we brought in and on a free after Liverpool released him along with a few other players from other clubs and stuff like that but he seemed to be the best of the bunch um, Harry Toffolo's come in as our left back um, prim primarily obviously for Adam Lewis who's the lone E that's obviously gone back to Liverpool connections massively there um, but yeah lo looks pretty decent um, we brought him in and um, has played pretty well so far in pre-season as well and then we also also brought in um, um, Parola, which we managed to get, which was down to our director of football, Terry Butcher. Massive um, props to him. A free transfer from Inter Milan. Um, didn't really necessarily need him to be honest. And um, we've got obviously like you know some some decent like you know young centre backs at the club. But, but when you look at his stats, you know what I mean. I couldn't not like you know like try to put a bid in, and we put a bid in, and yeah, he was quite happy to join us. And then the, the final one is another centre back. And now the reason that I brought this centre back in, and, and actually I've spent like obviously one point six million on him, is primarily because obviously Madsbeck Sorensen um, as um, left to go back to Brentford. We've had him on a two-year loan deal, which has been fantastic. Tried to sign him. They didn't want to let him go, understandably. And they tried to like loan him again, but no, they decided they, they're going to keep hold of him. Um, so Brentford have kept hold of him. So I had to look around. I spent quite a long time um, you know like obviously <laughs> in this video it's just cut straight to it but i've been spending quite a few hours like looking around and trying to find an ideal per, um, a replacement and i've managed to find one which is matty clark he was actually like he's actually been put on the transfer list by derby as well that's why i managed to get him for 1.6 million he was valued at 3.3 million and um, i was even prepared to pay that like you know what i mean because like when you look at him and um, you'll understand what i mean um, and this is him this is matt clark like you know and as you can see um, he's got, I mean, you probably might have heard of him before, like uh, uh, Ipswich and maybe Portsmouth and stuff like that. But yeah, we got him from, from Derby. Um, only been there like one season as well. Bought him in for Brighton for 2.9 million. But um, yeah, obviously he hasn't sorted out, found a place at Derby. But hey, I'm willing to take him. As you look at the stats and stuff like that, I just can't believe that they're willing to let him go. So Matt Clark, welcome to the club. As you can see, yeah, I had to spend quite a bit on the wages. Like, and there's a few other players now that have wanted extra con like contract talks because of the kind of like of because we've ended up bringing him in on that sort of wage, which is like massively hyped. It. I mean, we're in the championship now, so it's going to be um, that sort of situation, right? As for players going out. Um, mainly loans, um, that's been the year, but Benny Ashley Seal has gone, um, sort of like just didn't fit in very well. He was just like asking for to be a star player, not going to happen. So we, we, got, we got rid of him for 475,000. Um, Harry Marsden, you've gone out on loan to Port Vale. Charlie Wakefield's um, been sold. He's gone to Shrewsbury, just wasn't going to fit in with, with the plans. 
Uh, Jeffrey Richard, thanks again for, for watching and stuff out. Jeffrey, you've gone out on loan for Ipswich. Um, hopefully that will improve you further. Um, Rodolfo, unfortunately, you're actually going to go out on loan this season. You've gone out on loan to Salford. The reason being is that Jeff Davis, um, Danger Gerbil, as people know him, like, you know what I mean? He's actually, like, slightly improved and gotten better from, like, his loan from last season um, sort of thing. So, yeah, unfortunately, Rodolfo, your player is not seeing progressing as quickly as what um, Jeff is. So um, Jeff is going to be our backup goalkeeper for um, this season coming. Where because like obviously Richard O'Donnell, he has left. He, he um, has actually gone to Hull, but he's gone um, as a. I think he's gone as a player coach. Um, that's what the the it came in as. Like you know what I mean. So he's gone there. Uh, Daniel Francis has gone out on on loan to um, Gillingham, and um, we've also got Eric Van Hiltz. I mean, some of these players you probably don't even know because they're like you know down in the in in. The, like sort of under 18s and the 23s and stuff like that but uh, Eric Van Hiltz he's gone to Vitesse um, Arnhem um, on loan Joe Rowley uh, was humming and hawing over this one like I mean where to keep him not to keep him in the end, uh, Johnson Johnston came in with a bid of four hundred twenty-five thousand, which I couldn't really turn down. He's he was valued around about two hundred thousand, so it was nearly double, um, well more than double. Like you know what I mean, Lawrence Maguire, yeah, just wasn't you know, just wasn't so Harry Maguire's brother. Like you know what I mean, just not not fitting in. Like he's gone out on loan last season. Just hasn't improved at all. Like, you know what I mean? He's just not getting there. He's gone to Coventry for 210,000. Um, I'm going to have trouble saying this one. Um, Lucien um, Niseshu, Niseshu, something like that. I do apologise. I'm trying to think where he's from now. Is it Romania or somewhere? Uh, yeah, it is Romania. That was a good guess. Um, but um, yeah, he's gone on loan to Southport. We've got um, Gianluca Bucci um, has gone out on loan to South End. Aaron, Evan Har Aaron Evans Harriet, get that out quickly. He has stayed for another year at NK Dons, and they're happy to keep him for another year. Um, Harry Sutton, um, yeah, unfortunately, Harry, for some reason, the game will not allow this work permit situation so I don't know why that is like sort of thing so you've gone to Nashville um, after your loan spell ended I'm just hoping that as you get a little bit older and stuff like that maybe uh, some club in, in Europe buy you and then I can buy you from him uh, him buy you from them buy you from him buy you from them like you know what I mean but anyway um, so Harry um, I'm afraid you're not at the club at the moment but hopefully we'll get you back at some point um, I am I won um Molly Molyneux, oh some of these names like I mean he's on loan at Newport. We've got Michael Jones on loan at Leighton Orients. Joe Willis has left for fifty two thousand. He's gone to AFC Wimbledon. Uh, James Waite has also left. He's gone to Huddersfield for three hundred thousand. Um, and then finally Howard Johnson has gone on loan to Morecambe. There we go, guys. That is the transfer situation. We have done pre season, and I will just get into that right now. So um, it's not only just four games. Just bear with me on this one. But these are the first four that were the last four games I should say and as you can see looking pretty good and, and we have got the, the, the St. Johnston like one there is because of the Joe Rowley it was part of the deal we got an arranged like you know like friendly so that was pretty good to get that off that um, and uh, we won that game 2-0 workshop um, yeah we know that they have to be because they're one of our affiliates so they only have 4-0 though I, I was a bit shocked by that one Terry Butcher organized a training camp um, and it was the end of the of the season, so it wasn't like you know part of this beginning season. So I can look at it here if I go to to here and then scroll down. Uh, if we can get there. There we go. It's this training camp here, which was like held um, in Nottingham. Um, so going to the training camp was Nottingham Forest, West Brom, and Middlesbrough. Matlock was not part of the training camp that was actually a friendly but it was put in early because obviously they're an affiliate you know what i mean so but yeah and um, we did pretty well i mean we lost to forest to begin with but then we like got a, a great win against west brom and a, and a fantastic 6-1 win against middlesbrough and um, but yeah there's a game in here that i want to like just show you it's against matlock look how many shots that we had in this game 50 we had 50 shots like you know what i mean and i'm not i'm not, I'm not being funny but how the hell do we only end up like winning 4-0 with 50 shots like you know what i mean only 17 on target i mean i know that we were trying to like you know get like match fitness and stuff but that is absolutely crazy 50 shots that was just a, a, a mental um sort of situation some incredible um results there like but anyway let's get back to um, the beginning obviously of the 2022-23 season we're going to be kicking off against west brom 
in the championship to our first three games is West Brom, Swansea and Portsmouth. Um, these is we're now when we're getting into like, you know, the big leagues and stuff like that and how and how things are and stuff. Um, so that's in, in pretty impressive. The other thing I wanted to quickly look at was do 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 a uh, season preview of where the like media f feel that um, where we're going to finish. They're actually putting us at fourth, which again I'm like this is mad. Like I mean, eight to one favourites. Like you know what I mean, um, but yeah, I mean Crawley and Bristol Rovers that both came up with us. They're down as as, as relegation candidates, but. They're happy for us. They think that we're going to get playoffs. Like, you know what I mean? That that's that's really where where they're thinking that we're going to be. And as for 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 teams like you know, um, or should I say, like the the media dream eleven, we have got the new signing um, Clark that's in there in that dream eleven. So considering like you know what I mean, all the other players that are in here, you're starting to probably like recognise some names and stuff like that. Now is that Brian Brewster at West Brom? It is Rian Brewster. I've just seen that there. Um, and that is not going to be um, an easy um, sort of situation. Finishing's up to 18 now, like, you know what I mean? For the 22 year old. Um, yeah, some of these stats are just insane, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, Rian Brewster is who we're going to be facing in our very first game, which will be in Monday's episode, guys. But there we are, like, you know what I mean? This is like sort of like, you know, the end of like, you know, the, the previous season going into like this new season and stuff like that, like, you know what I mean? We still got like a week left of the transfer window. Will I? bring anyone else in you'll have to tune in on monday to find out like you know what i mean but i've got maybe a couple of little sort of irons in the fire like you know what i mean regarding it but nothing like you know that we desperately need like you know i think the side is looking um pretty decent at the moment let's just uh, i'm just going to show you like a little bit of the squad depth um as you can see looking pretty decent in, in fairly every area like you know what i mean i suppose goalkeepers probably our, our weakest area maybe You'd say like left back was maybe a little bit of a weak area, but as for everywhere else, it is looking pretty solid, guys. But there you go, guys. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. I do massively appreciate it. One of them would be massively helpful to the channel. If you don't mind telling all your friends and stuff like that, and let's make 2020 um, fantastic as we, like, you know, um, try and make this channel more, like, you know, fm related it's going to be there's going to be not just this like you know series i'm going to get other fm series that are going to be like kicking off before obviously um the end of like you know the cycle of the game which will take us till sort of I don't know, is it October, November time, like I mean, when it gets the um, when the FM twenty one comes out, can't even believe I'm even talking about it already. But yeah, there's gonna be some like other stuff that I've got like lined up like on the channel, guys. So please like you know, tell all your friends about it. And please, um, if you are new, why don't you hit that subscribe button? Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. You take it easy, I'll catch you on Monday, it's day from Moon Gaming. Signing off, cheers.